Tell among the nations his glories and his wonders among the peoples, for the Lord is great and highly to be praised. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Send to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. We're seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. God, who, ad who adorned St. Timothy and Titus with the apostolic virtues, grant through the intercession of both of them that living justly and devoutly in this present age, we may merit to reach our heavenly homeland through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the second letter of Paul to Timothy. From Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, gra grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did when I remember you constantly in my prayers, night and day. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice, and now, I am sure, lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying, of my hand, laying on of my hands for God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed, then, of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Responsorial Psalm. Pro Let our response be Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Proclaim, Proclaim God's, the God's marvelous deeds, deeds to all the nations. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Response Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations. Tell of his marvelous works among all the nations. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Ascribe to the Lord of families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of true his name. Response. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. 
Say among the nations, the Lord is king. The word is firmly established, and it shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Response. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you. From among the disciples, he saluted seventy, and he sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labors into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the labor deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter the house and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you, cure the sick who are there, and say to them, The kingdom of come near to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we celebrate the feast day of Timothy and Titus, two of the uh, disciples of Paul who became bishops. And uh, fascinating, we have what is called the pastoral letters, where Paul actually writes to Timothy and Titus and gives them advice. Both of them are young, and they're uh, leading a community. And so it's a, it's a beautiful letter, actually, to really read, understanding that uh, principle of the, the different struggles these uh, young uh, bishops uh, faced in their life. Uh, one thing I, I thought was kind of fascinating or in the readings where it said, uh, he said, don't be ashamed of, don't be ashamed of me in my um, imprisonment. Such a kind of a beautiful uh, a beautiful thing to think about because often we look at our church and we see how she is imprisoned and and we see how she you know is is defiled uh, some by her own actions uh, by by the sins of her her member clergy and uh, how often we as human beings will become ashamed of the church but we must always remember too that Yes, it is true that the members of the church fail, but the church gives us the opportunity to grow like no other uh, institution has. We're the only ones that you can reach your full potential in. That because of the graces that's offered through the Catholic Church, uh, people have the ability to go as far as they can uh, with those graces, through the sacraments, through the teachings, um, yes, it's, it's sad, it's tragic when we see uh, someone 
who has not embarked on that journey, especially when they are in a level of leadership. It, it, is, it is very sad. It's something that we should sorrow over. But we should also remember that, you know, the church is the ultimate ladder into heaven. It gives us the ability to uh, become all that we're created to be, and we should not be ashamed of it. We should not be ashamed of it because it is the message of salvation. And we must remember that there will always be a constant attack on the church from within, from without, because Satan does not want the church to fully enact its power in the world because she is the fullness of God's teaching, which means by participating in the church, you and I can become the greatest saint possible. That that's what's optioned to us. And you look at the Catholic Church, there's no one like the Catholic saints in the world. No human institution, no institution has produced people like Padre Pio, Mother, Mother Teresa, you know, St. Catherine of Siena, St. Ignatius of Loyola, St. Francis Xavier. There's just nothing like it. There, there's things that are similar. But the miracles they worked, the lives they changed... Um, the way they live their life, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like it in the world. And so this is what we must remember is, yes, we, we can be sad for the failings of the members of the church, but it's not because they followed the church that they failed. It's because they refused to follow what the church had invited them to. And so we can be sad for the things that have happened and justify by justify the failings of other people, but we must we must enjoy and embrace the graces that are offered to us because this is the ultimate uh, ladder of humanity, that humanity can rise to its greatness through the Holy Catholic Church. Dear brothers and sisters, gather to celebrate the good things we receive from our God. Let us ask him to prompt in us prayers that are worthy of his hearing. We pray for our Holy Father Francis, for Pope Emeritus Benedict, for our Bishop Joseph, for their health, intentions, and constant growth in faith, hope, and charity. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for... Um, Pray for the grace uh, to stand with our faith, uh, to pray for those who have failed in our faith, pray for those who feel failed by our faith, those who have been harmed uh, by us and, and by other members of the Catholic Church for their healing. 
For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for all those with stomach ailments and troubles, um, that they may be healed, especially through the intercession of St. Timothy. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for all those in leadership positions, positions to influence, especially in politics, the media, teaching, that they may respect God's uh, law for the earth, the natural law, and respect the great um, uh, dignity that he has placed upon human beings. And for the restoration of our religious liberties, for this we pray to the Lord. This Mass we pray in a special way for Theodore Sia. For this we pray to the Lord. In a moment of silence we offer up our own prayers and petitions. Pray to the Lord. We pray for all the holy souls in purgatory, and we ask them to join us with the saints and angels in heaven, to pray for more vocations to the priesthood, to the consecrated life, and to holy matrimony, to preserve all those in their vocations, and assist us in our universal call to holiness. For this we pray to the Lord. We also pray in a special way for Emil and Clifton as they prepare to uh, dedicate themselves to God and to each other through holy matrimony. For this we pray to the Lord. May the petitions of your church be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, so that we may receive from your mercy what we cannot ask out of confidence in our own merit. Through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink.
Dear brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God of the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray the offerings of your people, which we bring in celebration of the singing of Titus, and in your kindness render us fully acceptable by giving us sincerity of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Timothy and Titus you bid your church rejoice, so to you strengthen her by the example of their holy lives. Teach her by his, their words of preaching and keep her safe in answer to their prayers. And so with company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as you celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, 
who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot right now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you.
gospel, I am with you always, says the Lord. Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received, O Lord our God, nourish us in that faith taught by the preaching of the apostles and kept safe by the labors of St. Timothy and Titus through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended.